Good morning, afternoon, good evening, um, good night, wherever you guys are listening to this, and welcome to episode one, yes, of the general podcast we will be doing. Um, this is a new thing that we're going to start doing, maybe, um, where we're just going to have a general chat on um, specific things, maybe about the Premier League. Um, we will talk about all things transfers or anything going on in the world. That This is the sort of pod- we're going to start doing a new um, podcast talking about that. So it's not specific Reading. We will do specific Reading for the Reading podcast. But if we talk about other things, we're going to start trying maybe to do a general podcast, just specific maybe to Formula One or to the Premier League or wrestling or anything that's sort of happening in the world that's not Reading related. Um, we will do in a separate podcast, either with myself or Ryan or with myself and someone else or with someone else and someone else to do the podcast. Um, we were, we're going to start doing that um, soon, maybe once a couple of weeks. Um, but we're going to see how this goes. Um, we want to see how, what you guys think of it. Um, and we'll go from there. But uh, thank you for everyone for joining. Don't forget that we released a Redden podcast um, yesterday. For you guys was Monday, because uh, this is out on the Wednesday. Um, released a Reading podcast with me and Adam. Um, we talked all things Reading. We talked about the um, Watford game, um, and we went through the um, potential transfers that Reading could have made um, that we were linked with. Um, we had a discussion about that, um, and we just had a general chat about Bowen, um, and his opinion on everything that's going through in the academy as well. Um, so it's a very, very good. Um, by what I can see on the video so far, it's one of the fastest growing videos in the top three, top four um, videos that we've produced since we've become a podcast, um, which is very, very exciting and very, very good. Um, so I want to thank Adam very, very so much. It was a last minute call um, Sunday evening. Night, I think I messaged him about night, about eight o'clock. I said, Yo, and he had to wait to see whether he was going to be on the Tyler's then uh, podcast, but they did ask him to because they're idiots. Um, but they but he come on here and did a so much better job. So, thank you ever so much, Adam, for coming on. You are an absolute diamond. Um, so yes, so I also said at the end of the podcast, if you guys haven't listened to it, um please go back and listen to it now. But what I said at the end of the podcast was there was a stat that come out at the end of what well, I saw recently. And it was the whole of August, there was more deaths by suicide um, than there was by coronavirus. Um, so for me to you guys, all I would like to say is, is if you're going through anything, um, please come and talk to us. Um, we're very much an open podcast. Um, we will listen to everyone's opinion. We will listen to what you guys say. We will try and interact. We will always interact with everyone that we possibly can as well. Um, so we're also very far behind other podcasts as well. Um, so you just got to bear with us um, while we could try and get the guests on um, and try and get people to come on and do giveaways and stuff. But we can't do that yet. Um, one, financially and two, no one's coming back to me at the moment, but we're trying, we keep going, we're going to keep thriving and we're going to keep producing the best Reading and general podcast out there. Um, and we're going to do our best for that as well. So thank you for everyone so much so far that's followed us on all of the social media pages on Facebook. We nearly hit 100 um, followers, which I never thought would happen so quick within two months, three months, two, three months, nearly hit 100. Just, I thought that might take the end of the year because Facebook is very niche and very hard to do. Twitter, we're nearly at 300. Um, I say nearly, we're 255. We're closer to 300 than we are 200, so that's even better. Um, Instagram, we are nearly at, um, we're just over 100 and something. Um, we're still growing, still going, but thank you, ever, you, so go, you guys for all your help. And there's people on Instagram that keep saying, go and follow us. Um, we get the scores correct and all this and that. So you guys have been absolute diamonds to us. We will repay you guys, um, not with money, because it's just too expensive. Um, but we will get you guys just to say a massive thank you one day uh, to do that. We've got some ideas as well um, for deadline day in January. Um, but I'm not going to discuss it on the podcast because we all know people that listen to our podcast have been stealing our stuff. Um, 
So we're not going to say it on here, um, but we're building to what we're going and what we're doing. So yeah. So this is just a general chat about deadline day signings, not about transfer. We can go through some teams in general to talk about their signings. Um, but this is just basic, basic chat about what we think about the premiership signings, um, what we think about the championship signings. I've got a list here, so you don't need to worry. Um, and I've got a, a list of the international um, signings that happened on deadline day as well. Um, we don't really know much about the teams, but we know we know majority of the players. Um, so we're just going to go and have a little chat through that. So where would you like to start? Would you like to start with international, Premier League, championship? That's it. Um, start with Premier League. Right. So let's start with the Premier League. So the first signing of the deadline day basically was in the Premier League was Ben Godfrey. Um, that moved from Norwich to Everton for around about 20 million, could rise to 25 million. Um, what was your thinking on that? I think that's a, I think that's a great signing. sign. Yeah. Very good signing. It also, if you look at it as well, I think that was one of the positions that Everton really needed. Um, they got Michael Keane and Yerry Mina, but a, that's about it, isn't it, for centre backs they've got that could proper. Yeah. And you can guarantee there would definitely have been other clubs looking at him. Mm. Um, specifically Tottenham. Mm. Because they're, they're desperate for a centre-back, apparently. Um, but Everton have done very well this window. They, I, think I think they're up there yeah. with the top three best. They, um, they're definitely contenders for... Champions League, probably yeah. even to win the league. Uh, I, I put them as sixth. Um, f- fifth or sixth, I, I think I put them um, in our position <laughs> before the start of the season. I'm going to stick with that, only because there's still 30 Sonic games left in the season. and You always have a good start, you may drop off, but it's when you, if you can come back from it. But, um, but then the next signing was Alex Tellez um, from Porto to Manchester United for 13, a record, a put. Um, reported thirteen point six million pounds. I'm very a, I I highly rate Alex Tellers. Twenty seven, I think. Twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah, think no, that that's a bargain. When you mm-hmm. compare it to Chelsea, how much did they pay for Ben Chilwell? Fifty. I I take myself. I take Tellers over Chilwell. I think I think yes and no. I think yes because Tellez is main primed and ready and he's in his prime now. But no because Chilwell has got what maybe ten years. He could probably stay at Chelsea and do a job for them like Ashley Cole did. Um, and he he got off to a great start, didn't he? Um, Chilwell at Chelsea, um, scoring and got an assist against uh, Crystal Palace, wasn't it? Who had a great start of the season. Yeah. Um, next sign then. I don't know how I feel about it. I know how I feel about this, but I want to see what you feel. Edison Cavani, um, he was unattached. Mm. Um, he went to Man United, but he is apparently being reported that Man United had to pay over 10 million euros in agent fee um, for Edison Cavani's agent, and he's getting reported 15 million pound a year. Um, maybe more, maybe maybe a bit less. But, but what do you think about the signing? I, I don't know. It's 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 kind of a risk free, isn't it? He's a he's a well known player. Mm. He will do stuff for the for Man United's reputation, not that it needs it. Um the only problem is I feel like he's gonna just be another Radamel Falcao. So I was thinking that. Um, when the first thing I thought of when I heard Edison Cavani to Man United is, cool, they're going to score a lot of goals. Um, they're now going to, they've actually now got a proper striker. Um, I, that was my first instinct. I don't class Martial as a proper striker before anyone says it. He's not. He's a winger slash someone who slaps Lamella because he thinks he's hard. And Lamella felt like a sack of shit. <laughs> and you know what? People were so angry with Lamella for what he did, but I pissed myself with laughter. I was like, how to get someone yeah. sent off 101? Yeah. That's how you do it. I laughed at it, but like I said at the time, if I was Lamella, I'd be so fucking embarrassed. I wouldn't. 
I, that's what I used to do. I used to no, wipe people I said, I said that to my mate, though, and then he was like, yeah, but I think a 6-1 win kind of softens that a bit. Yeah, but um, I, for me, Edison Cavani is a player that I rate really, really highly. Um, I think he's a superb um, striker. I think he's probably one at the top. When he was at PSG, I think he was at the top, maybe seven, maybe top ten best strikers in the world. Top five, maybe, best strikers in the world. Um, Who, Cavani? Yeah, at, at one right. point, I, I rated... At I, one point, yeah, but now I, I don't think oh, he I'm not. I'm not saying now, but, but for me, I think it's a very shrewd signing because, one, they're going to make a lot of money from shirt sales in Uruguay, um, and they're going to make a lot of money from... I call People call them plastics, but the fans that don't live in the UK abroad that know the Cavani name, um, and just support the player, they're now going to buy a load of his shirts, which will generate more money for the club. Not only that, he's got a very wise head on him. Um, and he can help Mason Greenwood, the Rashfords, the Martials. Um, I've just seen as well. I, I was curious. His goal scorer record at PSG was actually incredible. Mm, I know. 200 games, 138 goals. Yeah, I know. And that, that include, I think that also includes the Champions League as well. Um, so you're, he's not playing against crap teams all the time, no matter what. He's he is an incredible striker, um, uh, but I think this is a panic. Yeah. Is, do you know what I class Man United signings as what Arsenal did under Emre and Ars- uh, under Wenger? What they did was is everyone goes, you need a defender, you need a defender, and they go, no, we need to score more goals than we do to stop them. So what they've done is, is and I saw this clip of, um, I think it was Harry Redknapp on Sky Sports on Deadline Day. And what he said was, is our, Man United haven't got a bad defence. He says, the problem with Man United is that they're not playing to their defensive strengths. He's going, you've got Harry Maguire on the halfway line trying to outpace Jamie Vardy or anyone like that. And you've got Lindelof that you're telling him to press really highly or Eric Bailly or whoever. Press We're really going to go high. off in a tangent in a minute. Yeah, yeah, I will do. Uh, but, yeah. but with Eric Bailly so high. But why are they, when, they, when they were at Leicester, Harry Maguire was further back and he had enough time to react and get to the ball and close and do, do better because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a PE teacher wearing a manager's suit. And I saw Jamie O'Hara say today, and, and he was so spot on about, um, about it all. What he said was that... Um, Man United is a weak team with a weak mentality, with a weak manager. That's why they will not get top six. And do you know what? I agree with that. Completely agree with that. Um, if he says when he went to Man United and he was playing, I'm paraphrasing a bit because I'm not going to say exactly what he said because I can't really remember. But he says when he went to Man United, you, you turn around before the game and go, right, let's not concede three here, lads. Let's just try and get into the game and try and do it. Because when you went to Old Trafford, you knew that they were going to work twice as hard as you. They were going to fight twice as hard as you. And they were also more skillful more than you are. So you had to play three times harder than what you would normally do in a normal match. And then this Man United team don't. Go on. Um, I was going to go off on a bit of a tangent. Did you see we, um, uh, the the Man United game at the weekend? Mm. Um, what happened at half time? Did you hear about that between uh, Bruno Fernandez and Harry Maguire? Mm. Uh, I'm going to try and find it. But what I read was apparently at half time, Bruno Fernandez went into the dressing room because he was subbed off at half time, wasn't he? Was it? I, I I can't remember. I was I was a little bit of glancing over it. I wasn't really paying attention yeah. because my daughter was being a pain in the ass. Um, so um, he went off at half time because apparently he went into the changing room and absolutely went off on one at Harry Maguire, um, saying stuff that he's not fit to wear the shirt, let alone be captain of the club. Right. This is what it says. Reports suggest that Bruno was subbed because he had a huge bust-up with Harry Maguire in the dressing room at half-time. It got so bad he had to be asked to be to stay. He had to be asked to stay in the dressing room with Martial. Bruno Fernandez's reaction in the dressing room at half-time yesterday led to his substitution. We understand he belittled club captain Harry Maguire and told him he didn't deserve to wear the shirt. Yeah, 
amongst other words, said that led to a bus stop. He had to be substituted as he couldn't stop the outburst and was asked to remain in the dressing room with Anthony Martial by the manager. See, uh, Bruno Fernandes has got a very big reputation as in a very much a hothead. Um, yeah. if, he's, if he's not happy with something, he says it and he's not afraid of the consequences or anything to that. Um, which, listen, he's paid millions to get, help Man United to do it. And he works probably twice as hard as probably 90% of that players that play for, that put that United shirt on. Um, and for me, Bruno Fernandes is what Man United need. But the other players on that pitch are not helping Bruno Fernandes. Um, yeah. And then that, that's my main issue. Um, but they also signed two other players um, on deadline day as well. Well, one they've signed now and one will come in January um, for them. So the one now is for... Oh, for fuck's sake. Why do you Uruguayans always have such a really hard name? Um, Facundo Pastrelli, um, Pastrelli. And he's come from Penarol, which... Penarol's manager is Diego Forlan, um, the former Manchester United striker. And if you know anything about football manager, if you know anything about FIFA, you know this kid becomes a wonder kid in the game, <laughs> in those games. And he is a top quality winger. Um, they also have made a signing for At- Atalanta's 18-year-old Adama Diallo, I think his name, but is uh, Triore. Is, is Diallo is actual middle name, but he goes by Triore. Um, and Man United have watched him and scouted him since he was 12 um, as they got rumblings and rumours he was going to be quite a player um, and in his, N- in his NFL fuck me it's because I was watching it earlier um, in his um, Serie A debut he only played 25 minutes and that's the only minutes he's played so far he got one goal and one assist in 25 minutes um, he is rated so highly in Serie A um, he was meant to be going on loan to Parma um, and everything was agreed, everything was signed, everything was about to be delivered uh, and he was going in the morning to Parma to go and play for him. But Man United come in with a 30 million euro bid, um, which is 20 million euro up front. I think it's like 12, 30 plus million euro bid, 20 plus million euro up front, 20 plus million in add-ons if he becomes where he is, um, and which they turn around to Parma and said, no, he's staying now. And now he's off to United because of a work permit he can't make there in time. But, yeah, I think Man United, have, they've done what um, what Arsenal, what, they're going the route that Arsenal did um, of let's not buy a defender, let's buy strikers. Um, it just makes no fucking sense. But we're going to go on to a feel-good factor here. Um, the academy boy has returned home. Theo Walcott has gone from Everton back on loan to Southampton um, for the season. Everton have paid, are paying 50% of the wage. They have not asked for any loan fee. They have not asked for anything. They have said to Southampton, we will split this down the middle um, because the, when there was a number of clubs interested in Theo Walcott to go back on loan. Uh, apparently reported some of them were Fulham, um, Crystal Palace, among others, but he saw Southampton have interest, it had interest, and he said, I want to go home. Um, I think that's going to help Southampton a lot now to push more up the table. What do you think? Absolutely risk free. Mm. Um, an area that they need to work on um, with a very good manager as well, I think. Oh, Hazen Hattel. Ralph I think Hazel 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 can get the best out of Walcott and really. Yeah really bring him back to the player he was seven, eight years ago. I think maybe no, not the player that he was, because the player he was was, was, was a good player, but he, there was something missing. But I think with the maturity he has now, he can adapt his game to the way that Southampton play. They play a basically like a 4-4-2, and he can easily play on the wing if he needs to. He can easily play up front um, with um, Danny Ings if Che Adams is not available. Um, I think Walcott's gone away, went to Arsenal, had all that time at Arsenal, um, did fantastically well at Arsenal, moved to Everton. Um, he did okay there the two years he was there, but I think he's now gone away a boy and he's come back. A, it's a bit like Bale. He went as a boy to Real Madrid and did whatever he did, and he's come back a man. And the maturity on him is going to be absolutely 
brilliant. I've just, um, I've just, so we're going back to Alex Tellers to Man United, mm-hmm. but I've looked on Porto's Twitter page and I find it very interesting because the way they announce players leaving, they don't say like who they've gone to no. or anything. But rather than saying good luck for the future, whatever, they've said congratulations. Hmm. Yeah, Porto are a weird one. Um, you never know how they actually feel about a player, ever. Um, they're, they're, they're a special... I love Porto anyway. If you listen to the podcast um, that I did on Monday with Adam, you'll understand that the love that I have for Portuguese youngsters, you will, you will, you will have an understanding. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I will happily, not happily say that, but yeah. But um, moving on to Fulham, they made three signings: Joachim, uh, Joachim Anderson from Leon um, on loan for the season. Um, they got Ruben Loftus Cheek on loan. Um, for the season, and they got to, oh, Tosim Adiboyo Adibayo from Manchester City um, on an undisclosed fee. Two defenders and a central midfielder. Mm. Who was that? Sorry, Fulham. Mm. Oh, um, it's where they needed to improve. Well, so, no, so I'll be honest. You're never heard of them. So Joachim Anderson um, was was from Sassuolo. I, I think it was either him or it was from someone else, but he was from Sassuolo, I think. Um, maybe a different player, but I know there was one go to Fulham and they signed him for 10 to 11 million euros um, to fight for the first team, but he never got into the first team and he wants to get into the euros by the end of the year. Um, so what he's done was, is, can I please go out and loan and Leon are gone? Okay, that's fine. Um, to, 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 Tosin Adebayo, Adebayo um, he was on loan last season at Blackburn. Um, and Blackburn manager rated him so highly, he said he will become one of the best defenders in the Premier League um, when he saw him. Loads of clubs wanted him. And Blackburn asked to have him back on loan, but he wanted to play Premiership football. And the only way he was going to get that is he wasn't getting it at Manchester City. Um, so Fulham are come in, and I think this might be a bit of a risk-free um, defender. Uh, yeah, sign it because... I, I can imagine there's some kind of clause in that loan, like there was with us with Nathaniel Chalaba when we had him, mm-hmm. and that that agreement is that Man City will pay. No, it's not a loan; pay. it's a free. It, it, they, oh, is it paid, free? No, no, no. They paid for him. Fulham have signed <laughs> him permanently. Okay, yeah, risk-free then. So, I-class is... A, the reason why I-class is risk-free is because he's done it in the Championship and rated very highly. If Blackburn... If Fulham go down, they already... They now have a defender that's capable of doing it. And when I've yeah. watched Fulham so far, the two central defenders... And I'm classing Michael Hector in this as well. Um, they, they're not good. They're not good enough for Premiership. I, um, I, I hope... I wish him all the best in his recovery, though. Was he injured? No, did you not see him get absolutely murdered by um, Saeed Ben Rama? Or that not make no, a bit dirty. No coming back from that. No, yeah, that was a bit dirty. It's a bit. And then Ruben Loftus. I heard right there was there was a stumbling block to start off with between Fulham and Chelsea for Ruben Loftus Cheek's wages, right? And I put this in the group chat yesterday because I couldn't believe it. Ovi Ajaria, who's probably played week in week out um, for Reading for the past two three years. Um, yeah. I've been absolutely superb. One of the best, probably one of the top five best midfielders in the league is yeah. on 10, 15, 20 grand a week. Let's hypothetically say. Yeah. Ruben Loftus-Cheek hasn't played proper football. And I think he hasn't played more than 10 games a season for the past five, four, three years. No, I, I think he's, he hasn't played a full season since he was on loan at Palace. Yeah, I don't think he played a full season there. He got injured. No, I, I'd count that as a full season, though. No. All right, so a full season since Palace. And he's on 150 grand a week. Fucking hell. Yeah. And I, Harry Brentnap was in the studio when they said that, and he went, what? He went, <laughs> 150. He went, the boy hasn't played proper season football. How is he on that much? He's been injured the majority of his time, and he's been sat at home collecting 150 grand a week. Um, at this and but he's gone on, on loan to Fulham with no option to buy 
uh, because uh, Frank Lampard still sees Loftus Cheek as part of his plans, um, his Chelsea plans, but he needs him to play first team football and needs to get him uh, match fit and up to scraps, which. 150 grand a week for Lou, Ruben Loftus Cheek. Who ever thought that? That's just ridiculous. Um, talking of um, ridiculous, Ruben Olsen uh, um, has gone on loan from Roma to Everton. He's, it looks like he's going to be fighting that number one jersey um, against Jordan Pickford. Um, what was your thinking of that? Perfect signing. Because, um, let's be honest, Pickford, bit inconsistent. Yes, but and a bit when the when league. your when your like biggest competition is Jal Virginia, you've got a problem. Reports come out Everton is Ancelotti rates Virginia so highly. Um, I would go as far as saying, me personally. I would rather play with Jordan Pickford with a broken arm than Joe Virginia. I hope he goes. Well. I hope he does well, uh, Joe Virginia. He had a terrible and time with us, but... having a good backup keeper. I say backup keeper because it's going to be. It, I think it's going to be the same kind of situation as Dean Henderson at Man United. Mm-hmm. You've got two good keepers. As soon as De Gea. In this case, as soon as Pickford slips up, you're going to get someone capable of stepping in and keeping that place locked down. I'll tell you what, Everton have done absolutely fantastic this, this, um, absolutely fantastic this, um, this transfer window. It's just... Yeah. You could see that you could... If you look at the transfers they've done before with Marco Silva, Roberto Martinez, you go, they're good signings. They're an Everton signing. They're one of those players that you go, yeah, that's an Everton signing. That's a good signing. It's not world class. It's not going to push them above, but it's Everton signing. It's a good sign. Carlo Ancelotti pops in and it's like, oh, all right, world class signing, world class signing, world class signing, world class signing. Ben, ben Goffrey, potential to be world class. You've got um, who the sign? Alan from Napoli, excellent signing. Ancelotti loves him. Hammers, absolutely superb so far. Not only that, you've got Abdul Takore. You could just tell he fits an Ancelotti team. And not only that, that Watford team is just terrible anyway. Um, so he didn't have the best. But you can see that the signings that they made, Dominic Calvert Lewin looks like a new signing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I never rated him before, I'll be honest. I didn't I didn't mm-hmm. think he right. I didn't rate him. I don't think he was a leading Striker, he was. I don't think he was good enough for Everton. I don't think he would have been a striker to push you on and get European football. No, However, he's un- really, yeah. under Ancelotti now, I think he's got the potential to be top three strikers in the league. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. And the he's one, got his confidence. The, the one thing that I think you can tell the difference was was uh, Calvert Lewin very much rushed everything. Um, with what he was doing in front of goal. But now, I think he did in an interview after a game where he scored a hat-trick, and he goes, what is the difference now between what you did before? And he says, positioning of where I am. He goes, before, I was trying to hit shots from outside the box, trying to run it at defenders and this other. Like when he goes, that's not my job. My job is the six-yard area and the, and the inside the box. If I get a goal outside the box, I get a goal. But my, I have to be in that box because either there's a rebound or a cross and I have to be on the end of it. And he's just shown, if you're, and he's, a bit, he's doing a Duncan Ferguson. I don't know whether you remember Duncan Ferguson as a player, um, but it's a good thing that he's there with Calvert-Lewin because you can see the type of player Calvert-Lewin's becoming is a Duncan Ferguson type of player. It's right place, right time. Right place, if right some... time. He's got strength as well. He's not a weak, he's not weak either. Yeah. Um, it, it's good as well this season I'm going to go back to Hazenhuttle as well because that's two strikers there, Calvert-Lewin and Danny Ings if they have seasons like Danny Ings did last season, if he keeps that up and Calvert-Lewin plays as well as he has been playing there is a lot of pressure on Southgate for the England squad they're going to make the team 
They're going to make the team easily, I think, them two. And I think they're also going to make the yeah, team. But um, also, Southgate has actually come out before and said that the big club bias is a real thing. Oh, yeah. And it, it really shouldn't be. It annoys me, the fact, like, last last year at some point, he come out and said, the problem is we have players that are playing well for their club. Mm. So why are you picking them? Because we've got no It's other because Harry Maguire is captain of Man United. He's not, he, like, shouldn't be in the team. Especially when you've got someone like Jamal Lasalle at Newcastle who makes them a substantially better club. You've got James Tarkowski. You've got players like that who... Yeah, but then you the but then you've got really also good. but then you've got to also think about as well is yeah they may be good players but you've got to think about the play style that you're going to play as an international team and James yeah, Kowalski and Jamal Lasalle do not does play Harry the same. Maguire, what huh? style does Harry Maguire suit? A style where he's a bit further back and he can keep the ball at his feet, and he's and he's good at distributing the ball around which he's very good at it's a bit him and Connor Cody are the same type of player but Connor Cody's a bit more pacey um and I, I rate Connor Cody as well a lot I really like him um for me I think Harry Maguire is an England player it's the way that he suits and it's not big team bias it's play style bias it, you're not it's gonna not pick, you're not gonna it can, it, it can be but then you've got to think about as well at the same time James Karkowski cannot play the way that um like a, I'm trying to think of John Stone, not John Stone. That's a okay. terrible idea. Let I'm me put it differently. Then. You've got Harry Maguire, who's had a very poor, poor time at Man United. Mm-hmm. So why was he picked ahead of Connor Cody, who's had his best season of his career? Because I, then I, I can only go by the play style of. You just said that was the same player. I don't, I can't tell you exactly what Southgate's thinking. My brain, I would have picked them both. I don't know who else he's picked. Um, I would have picked them both because I, I like going, both of them. I'm going back like to last season now. I think oh, Connor, no, like, he's, Connor Cody's been picked for the games, the last international break when um, uh, it was Denmark we played and who was the other team? Iceland. He was picked yeah. that one. Last season, yeah, you've got to be careful when you pick players up because when they... We quickly run good. through the latest England squad. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, keep talking for a sec while it loads. All right. Um, it's all it's more about play style than it is ability and if, if Gareth Southgate has more trust in Harry Maguire and the way that he wants to play he's going to get picked over anyone OK so the latest squad the goalkeepers you've got Pickford Pope and Henderson mm-hmm. defenders you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold mm-hmm. Tyrone Mings Kieran Trippier Eric Dyer, Joe Gomez Kyle Walker Michael Keane Connor Cody, Ainsley Maitland Niles, mm-hmm. Ben Chilwell, um, Bakayo Saka, Harry Maguire, and Reese James. Mm-hmm. Midfielders, you've got Declan Rice, Mason Mount, Harry Winks, James Ward Prowse, Calvin Phillips, Jack Grealish, Harvey Barnes, and Jordan Henderson. And forwards, you've got Harry Kane, Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford, Tammy Abraham, Danny Ings. And Dominic Calvert Lewin. Mm. The big question as well, we shouldn't talk about it now, but at the end of the season, they're going to have to get that from however many there. I think that's about 28 man squad there, 25 man squad. 25. Down to a 23. Mm. Who misses out with Tammy Abraham? But that's that's for later in the season. We can't. Yeah, say that. we're gonna we're gonna do an England special during the Euros, and we'll do all of that. We'll do the Euro special, and that could be quite fun to do uh, during that time. But at the moment, I think that's a pitch perfect team. That I think would be picked for England. Um, I can't think of any other players I would have picked ahead of any of them. Um, I think James Karskowski is a good defender. I don't think he's England good enough. Jamal Lascelles, good defender. I don't think he's good enough for the England squad or international duty. But if they carry on with the if they carry on with the season's going, he's going to have to make the difficult choices, and he's going to have to go right. Moving on to transfers, we've got Rafinha from Rennes to Leeds for 17 million plus add-ons. I tell you what, that is an s- exciting signing. I rate the um, the Leeds Twitter for that to be fair. Yeah, yeah, 
hundred percent. Um, fish and chips. If you've not seen it, just go and look. Yeah, you have to go and check it out. It's brilliant. Um, I didn't know this, but I heard it on Sky Sports at the time. Rafinha's agent is Deco. Oh, really? Yeah. Quite weird. Quite weird anyway. anyway, um, I'm really, really excited about him as a sign, and he's very quick, very, very straight. He's a fucking great player. Um, and then last but not means least for the Premier League, I think the most longer transferred, if you're not Jaden Sancho, is Arsenal are now having a party. Bring your vodka and Bacardi. A Thomas party. He's there having a proper Thomas party. What a signing. What an unbelievably great signing that is for Mikko Arteta's team. Yeah. That he brings something that Arsenal needed. And I think Paul Merson was correct when I, when I was listening to him yesterday, which is very rare, um, when he said that they, they are missing a player of his quality. You do not stay in a Diego Simone team for three plus years being relied on as much as Diego Simone did for Thomas Partley. Party, he's having a party, bring your Vokka and Bacardi. Um, as much as what Simone did, because in the deal for Lucas Torreira, um, from Arsenal to um, Atletico for the loan deal. It was in the talks with Torreira and Simone of how he's going to work party and Torreira together. Um, so they were so confident that they were going to get this deal done. Um, and then the Gunnosaurus gets released on a free transfer. Um, Done for Seville now, are not he? Yeah, he's gone off to Seville, which is brilliant. Um, and... So what is that? that that's a player that is a Patrick Vieira um, type of player that Arsenal have been missing. Yeah, to push them on, isn't it? Yeah, one hundred, one hundred percent. Right, right. Before we go on to the next bit, that's all the Premier League done, isn't it? Yeah, we're now going to go into international. Right, it's fucking mad. three questions for you. Go on. Who won deadline day? Who made so? Who was the best signing? Thomas Partey. Who, who was the best signing of the whole window? And final question is who won the transfer window? Okay. Oh, this is this is this is this is a difficult one. This is a difficult one. Um I can't really I, I can't really think of players that um Okay, so the people that won deadline day was Arsenal because they got Thomas Partey in. Um, but, I mean, what what was the best signing of deadline day? Thomas Partey was the best signing of deadline day for me um, because he now pushes Arsenal to be that top three um, now than what he did before. Um, what was the other one? The team, the best trans, the single oh, best the whole window. Yeah. Oh, there's a few here. Eh? I think you've got to think about Bale, maybe. Maybe Gareth Bale coming back to Tottenham. Maybe yeah. James Rodriguez going to Everton. Thiago going to Liverpool. Kai Havertz and Timo Werner going to Chelsea. Thiago Silva going to Chelsea. Um... Sergio Rangulian, wherever his name is, Ranguli, um, to Tottenham. Oh, this is a this is a bit of a difficult one. This one, Edison Cavani. No, I'm joking. Um, all right. So best transfer deal out of all of it. If it goes the way that it's going, it's between. I can't really pick one. I'm really struggling to pick one. So I'm, I'm in between two. So it's between James Rodriguez and Gareth Bale. Okay. They're they're the ones that if Bale comes back and does what Bale does best, then yes, Bale comes back and doesn't do as good as what we're all thinking. Mm, Don't think it could be that good. And what was the last one? The the best team. Yeah, what team won deadline day? Deadline day or transfer in uh, general? No transfer window, sorry. All right, that's between Everton and Tottenham. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think they covered everything that they needed covered. And plus, of course, the window is still open. So, for yeah. example, Tottenham are desperate for another centre back to really kick on. Yeah, so they're um, going after they could, Swansea. They go and, yeah, they can go and sign Joe Roden from Swansea. Mm-hmm. Good player as well. He was he was um, he was talked up for by um, Ben Davis and Gareth Bale as a potential good signing for him. Um, so they're looking into him. Um, but I think it's between Everton and between Tottenham. I think Everton, if they carry on the way they're going and they get top five, top six, um, <laughs> maybe top four, then they've won it. Um, I still don't see Tottenham... I say I don't see Tottenham getting top four because of, if you look at... The, do you know what? I've, I've decided. I see a lot of people saying the championship is better than the Premier League. But I think the transfer window, this, this summer transfer window, has really shifted. Because yeah. if you look at the teams, there is some fucking good teams. Like you've got Everton, Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, um, Man United. The, the, the best way of saying it, you would probably say the, the, the balance has really like become visible. Like There was obviously a massive gap between... Um, yeah, the top between, four than everyone else. Yeah. No, you had you had Liverpool, Man City, mm. and then a massive gap between the rest of them. Mm. And it was sort of like there were sort of four four teams in that next gap, maybe mm. maybe five. And then you had a bit more of a gap to like Wolves, Leicester, and then probably a little bit of a gap again down to Everton. Yeah. But now there it's very level between top ten. I I I would say I think Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea have the best squad I think there's a tiny tiny gap I think that should comfortably be the top three but then you've got a tiny gap to Wolves Everton Arsenal Arsenal Tottenham Leicester Mm -hmm. I would put them in there yeah yeah Leeds definitely put Leeds in there Um, what you think Leeds top top eight Leeds top 10 easily at the moment. Um, you, but you think there's not a gap between Leeds and Wolves? No. No? No. I think if you've got to think about it, think about So I think about it in two ways. I think of it as in quality of player wise, there's a massive gap between Wolves and Leeds. Think about it. Bielsa to Nuno Santos is you've got two excellent managers. But Bielsa, on the other hand, is an unreal manager. And that's if it was any other manager that was managing Leeds, I would put them eh, maybe top 10, just getting number 10, just below it because of the size. But because they got Bielsa, and the Bielsa, I just love watching a Bielsa team. I don't care what people say. I don't like Leeds. I don't care. I like, I love, I enjoy. If you watch that Leeds versus Man City, did you watch the Leeds Man City game? Fuck it, what a good game. That was 1-1, but that was bong, bong, bong. That was a pure a Bielsa type game. It was, all right, Man City, you're going to play into our hands. And the, the work rate, and I can't underestimate the work rate of Bielsa was, his team had 11 players behind the ball when they would defend them. When they went into attack, it was 7v3, 7v4. They had so many players bombing forward and helping then when they go back to defend, they all go and it's the work rate of that team is unbelievable. And that's why at the moment I watched Wolves game against uh, West Ham. Oh, I didn't rate the Wolves, Wolves at all in that game. They look awful. Um, and they just beat Fulham 1-0. And if you only just beat Fulham by one goal, there's something wrong with you. Um, Even Brentford beat him by more than that. Exactly. So there's a bit of a worry with Wolves, I think, this season. Um, I'm... I'm not fear they're not they're not hitting on all cylinders at the moment, but well they'll get there. But I would class and I think that the internet the international window has proven that the Premier League is the best league to come to. Because if you yeah. look at the spending, the Premier League are gone, yeah, try and match us. And they've yeah. spent all of Germany, all of France and all of Spain, but they've not just done it stupidly. They've brought in absolute gems. Um yeah. For the team, right? So, I'm, I'm going to answer my own question as well. Go on then. Um, who won deadline day? For me, I think it's Man United with Alex Tellers. You were passing better than Thomas Party. Not necessarily, but I think 
I think Man United have gone and got what they needed and a they very got a good centre back. That's what they needed is a centre back. Yeah, well, I still I rate Tellers. I think he's perfect. <laughs> I think point. I think he's a great player, but I would not. I would yeah, go on, carry on. The, the window as a whole, I think the best, the smartest signing for anyone, I think, is Nelson Semedo to Wolves. They've replaced Doherty with a very, very, very good player. Mm. Yeah. And no brainer for who won the window is Everton. They've taken yeah. themselves for sort of like battling, pushing, should be pushing to Europe. To now, I think they have every chance of qualifying for the Champions League. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you on that. So let's go through. We'll do international transfers first before we get onto the Championship. First one I want to talk about. Can If anybody's watching this and you can get me in contact with Eric Tree Promoting's agent, <laughs> please, <laughs> please do. Yeah, I want him. He's gone from Stoke to PSG to Bayern Munich. Fair and he's way. awful. He's not awful. He's one of those players that... Is Did you a... see his miss in the Champions League quarterfinal against Atalanta, I think it was? No, I don't think I saw that. I think I might have. Right, the camera went round to, I think it was either Neymar and Mbappe or Mbappe in, mm. the, in the stand. And they had head hand, head in hands. It was unbelievable. Yeah, but didn't he get the winner? Was it him that got the winner in the end? Uh, was it? I think it was. I think it was him who got the. So he made up for it. He got the winner. In I, the end, I yeah. think it. I think it was the next game that he had an absolute howler. Mm. So Ryan Sessignon has gone from Tottenham to Hoffenheim um, on, the, on the loan deal. I, I do love. A young Englishman going to Germany. That sounds weird. It's always good to hear in a young Englishman going abroad to learn. Um, and that's a fantastic... I, I don't think there has actually been a, a, a young English player that's gone to Germany and not done well. Look at Reese Nelson at Hoffenheim mm-hmm. last year. Adam Ola Luckman going on to uh, Red Bull Leipzig. He's Jayden, now on loan at Fulham. Yeah. Jaden Sancho. Um mm. It was the uh, John Joe Kenny from Everton. You got that Ethan Abu Abdu that went on loan Ethan, to Leipzig. Ethan Abdu, yeah. Yeah. Um, you had the oh, who's the centre back? Um, Ethan Abu. Ethan Abu. Ethan Abu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you had the centre back from Chelsea. No, carry on. My mind slipped. It will come back to me. All right. Uh, next one that's gone is he's gone back home. Um, Douglas Costa. Um, he's gone back to Bayern Munich on a loan deal. Doesn't look like he was in Andrea Pirlo's... That sounds weird to say. Andrea Pirlo, the manager of Juventus. Anyway, um, plans for this season, so he's gone. Um, Ruben Venega, Vigena, wherever. Um, he's gone on loan from Wolves to Olympiacos with an option of a £20 million buy. Um, good signing. Good signing for them. Good, really quick left wing back as well. So he could do well for them. Um Guardio Cariello from Southampton to Elch for free. He was once Southampton's record signing and he's gone on a free. Um, just shows how much they're trying to make up for the crap that they did. Um, Matthew Guendouzi. Um, Neil Mopé's punching buddy. Yes, mate. Yeah. Uh, he's gone on loan uh, to Hec- uh, Hertha Berlin. Um, I, I've got to say, I do rate Guendouzi. But clearly, he's got a problem with his attitude. Yeah. And I want to tell you a story. And I, I, I don't know if these facts are correct about her to Berlin. But I want to make... But I want to... I have an understanding of it. No, I'm going to eat a sandwich. You, you can eat a sandwich while I do this. Um, they were a big club in Germany. But they weren't pushing forward. And I think they had a bit of a bad season. And they were going down. And a Saudi or a um, Qatar-based uh, businessman brought... Um, her to Berlin um, and they sacked the manager at the start of the season brought Jurgen Klinsmann in who was the director of football at the time to manage them they did well they then sacked the manager um, and then brought in this guy that did it before lockdown he was about to manage again but then lockdown happened I don't know who he was the former I think he was the former Hoffenheim manager but he's very highly rated in Germany 
Um, it's quite young, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a youngish manager as well. So he went to her to Berlin and they said, right, what do, he, he said to the owner said to him, right, what do you want us to do to push you and help you get to the top four, to get you into the Champions League? And he said, we need this player, this player, this player, this player. And I think he listed off about nine players. And the owners went, all right. They spent 75 million in um, a transfer window to push... Bruno Nadia. That's him. Um, He come back out of lockdown. And I think they only lost once or drew once since when they come back after lockdown. Um, to the end of the season, they went on an unbelievable. They were pushing top five, top six, I think, last season. Um, They've already lost twice this season, though. No? Have they? Oh God! Um, but I, I, Hertha Berlin are a club that are on the up, and they've got the stadium, that the national stadium that um, German, the Germany go and play. And if you, you ever, you, and the Olympics was there as well. And it holds a 70,000 seat stadium, I think 60, 70,000 seat of stadium. And as soon as the, the fans are allowed to back in, that's going to be, I do like a bit of a herd to bet. I do like a team that's always struggled and then they get a lot of money, a bit like Man City. Um, not that I like them, but when they've always struggled, always been around, always try and do certain things. And then they get injected ton crap money and they just go absolutely ape shit with it. I do quite like that. Um, but that's a good loan signing for him. Samir Babayako, Babayako um, he's teamed up with um, Gattuso again um, when he was with the Gattuso at AC Milan. He's now with Gattuso at um, Napoli. Um, who we got here then? Michael Kusian, Kusian um, Bayern Munich player. He was about to join Leeds. He's one of those FM wonder kids. Um, he's also a, f- f- a FIFA wonder kid as well. Um, he was about to join Leeds, but failed a medical. Um, but he's moved to Marseille on loan. So, now yeah, that works. Um, Josh Cullingham. I think he's Irish. The Irish, he's Irish international, isn't he? Sounds Irish. Yeah, I think he's Irish international. He's moved to Vincent Company's Andalect on a permanent deal. I think it's around about one and a half to one million. Um, one of the signings I don't understand, but I get it, made. Chris Smallin. He's gone from Manchester United to Roma for 13.6 million, rising to 20 million euros. Um, I think it's around about 16, 17 million pounds in add-ons. Um, he's better than Lindelof, and he's better than Bayou. And he proved that in, in Italy. Why is he not sticking around to help the defence? That makes no sense at all. I know he wanted to leave because he, um, they still got Phil Jones. I don't know, I don't know, it makes no sense. But I understand he wanted to leave and go back to Roma because he really loved it and he liked the culture and everything about it. But why did why Man United getting rid of him? Why have they not played him instead of Lindelof and Bayou? But if you've got an unhappy player. Mm. Got Wesley Hoot, Hoot um, that's gone from Southampton to Lazio. He's gone back to Lazio. That's where Southampton signed him from. Um, Watford have done it again. Um, Gerard Delafayu has gone on loan to Udinese. Um, he's not sticking at Watford in the Championship. He's going to the Serie A and playing for Udinese. Um, I wish Reading had another club like that in Syria and just loan them between them. They're fucking marvellous, isn't it? Um, we got Porto now. I'd rather have that, to be honest. That's fucking marvellous. Um, Sandro Ramirez um, from Everton. Um, he, had, he was a quality player when he was in Spain. Just never really kicked on at Everton. Um, he had his ter- mutual termination of the contract. And within 10 minutes, and this is no joke, as within 20 minutes of it announced that there was a mutual termination of Sandro Ramirez's contract, he signed for Husi, Husia in Spain within 20 minutes. So that deal was working in the background, wasn't it? And finally, last but no... Huesca, you said. H-U-E-S-C-A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and finally, the last deal of the day that happened just after the 11 o'clock transfer, but... I think they probably did the paperwork for it, was Lucas Torreira um, on loan at 
uh, Atletico Madrid with an option of a £22 million pound buy um, at the end of it, which is quite a good, quite a good deal, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's quite good international there. Quite good. It's nice to see some players like Ryan Sessignon going abroad, Josh Cunningham um, going off to Vincent Company's Anderlecht. Um, nice to see Chris Smalling going abroad as well. Uh, I did say this, Jerome Sinclair has gone on loan to CSKA Sofia um, on loan from Watford. Um, Nottingham Forest did something, but I don't give a shit about him. Um, no, that no, that Nottingham Forest one was a bit dodgy. What the Nuno da Costa? No, no, they signed uh, Grzycki, didn't they? Did they? Stop yeah, me. I'm not sure if they've done it today. No, I've done it yesterday. Sorry. Oh, so right now we move on to the championship. They're not even in the championship. Why am I got them here? Yeah, Blackpool made a quite a good signing there. Anyway, they're not in the championship, so I can't say what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, I've just looked, and the Grzycki transfer that I was on about, basically the rumour was that Olympiacos were going to buy him, and then he was going to be loaned out straight away to Nottingham Forest. Oh, okay. But it didn't happen. That's one way to get your affiliates to keep on your side, isn't it? Buy a great player and then just loan them to one of your affiliates. That's what I used to do on FM. Um, so let's start off with Jack um, Akinson. It's moved from Celtic to Barnsley on a free. Um, Alberta Ad- uh, Was that Jack Akinson? Yeah. Um, good player. He's from Celtic, so he can't be that good. No, he's um, a good, good young striker. It could be a bit of an issue for Barnsley, though, because their manager, that the one that um, we all yeah, like... Yeah, linked with... Um, he's in advanced talks with Red Bull... Um, Red uh, Bull, New York, New York Red Bulls. New, yeah. Um, he's in advanced talks, so it could be happening very soon. He could be moving to the States um, to become manager of New York Red Bulls. Um, good signing for New York Red Bulls. Be interesting for him if he can get his play style in America. Um, but... No, they've got good signing as well for every championship club that isn't Barnsley. Yeah, but Barnsley could. Str- I think Barnsley will really struggle if he leaves. Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, Alberto Ad- 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 Adome, Adome, Adoma, Adoma. Um, he got released by Nottingham Forest and signed for QPR the next day. Um, good signing. Um, I, if he comes to Reading, I'd go, eh, all right, not bad. Good good backup winger, I think, um, for for Reading, anyway. QPR, I'd probably start from. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to skip over that one because it makes me happy. Uh, Chris Willock moved from Benfica. Um, he is the brother of Joe Willock from Arsenal. Um, Chris Willock was also... Um, Where's the, they got, there's three of them, aren't there? Yeah, is, there th- is, it, is, it, is there another one? So, yeah. I'm there, Joe Willock's at Willock. Arsenal. Willock. Yeah, yeah. Joe Willock's at Arsenal. Chris Willock is the one who left Arsenal to go to Benfica. Did he go to Paok on loan and win every trophy there in Greece? Was it Greece? They, they could have. I think he went on loan to Paok. Um, yeah, there's Chris Willock, Joe Willock, and Matthew Willock. Oh, I don't know nothing about Matthew. Uh, it's Chris Willock then, that went to Greece, if I'm right. And he wasn't he on loan at a, at a championship team last season. Wasn't he on loan at Huddersfield? Yes, I think so. So you've got Matthew Willock who plays for Gillingham. Mm, you've got Joe Willock, who's obviously. Uh, oh, West Brom. Oh, uh, sorry. What? sorry, no, Arsenal. I don't know where I got West Brom from then. But didn't Chris Willett play for West Brom at a point? Did he? <sighs> yeah, he was on loan there, but never played. Yeah. So, Chris Willett left Arsenal on a free and went to Benfica, if I'm right. He then yeah. went from Benfica to Paddock on loan. Or he went yeah. to Paddock. Did he? Has he gone to Greece? 
Who the fuck am I thinking of then? Who's the one who went to Greece? I saw a picture of it the other day. Anyway, it's not him then. But I think he apparently signed for QPR for around about 200, uh, 300,000. Oh, they're not. Oh, right. uh, 300,000. Um, good signing for, for QPR. Good backup, I think. Um, Riley McGee um, has been signed on loan um, from Charlotte FC. I think that's from America. America. Um, Australian to Birmingham. Um, he, he's the one who did the scorpion kick goal a while ago. Um, Birmingham fans were like, oh, yay. I was like, ooh. Um, Josh Knight has moved on loan from Leicester to Wickham. Um, Wickham need as much reinforcement as they can. Uh, I want to say congratulations to former Reading Academy player. Oh, the fuck is his name? Um, he's just signed for Wickham on a free after getting released from our academy. Um, but yeah, if you're listening to this, well done. I may not remember your name, but congratulations. And lastly, I think the best signing, the top three best signing that happened in the championship in general is Thomas Estevez. Oh, oh slight erection. Um, he has come on loan from Porto to the greatest team in the world, Reading, um, for a season-long loan. Um, no option to buy unfortunately, uh, because apparently he has a release clause of like 40 million. Um, we'll, we'll just activate that. When we go uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> pennies. Um, so, Red, so, are you, so, happy? Thomas, yep. what, what, what's your thinking about Thomas Estevez? What we needed times 10. Hmm. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, I think as we spoke about this on the podcast um, on Monday, but we'll talk a little bit better now so you can go, because he hasn't even watched it yet. Dickhead. Um, but you can go back and watch it after this if you can. Please, thank you. Love you. Uh, and we talked about this and apparently um, Adam said that he had a conversation with Charlie um, in the Snapchat group chat um, that we're in and basically Charlie said is why are we going after a right back when we have Aruna, Yeardom, Holmes Injured, injured not a right back Yeah because he said when Aruna comes back and when Yeardom comes back what's going to happen, why are we getting a right back in when when they come both come back fit they're both going to be fighting for the same position Was it Curtis Anderson you was thinking of? That's something for Wickham. No. Was it him? I don't think it was him. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So, so what is your thinking? So, because of what they said, when you hear Dom Aruna come back, what do you think? Because I, I said my point on the last podcast, um, on the last one was that basically I said is Holmes is not a right back and he can go and slot in the CDM Centre back role in case more Morrison get injured. Um, Aruna looks like someone that can play right back, centre mid, left back, left wing, right wing, centre attacking mid. So he will come back and do a job on the pitch where he's needed. Um, that's why we needed Yeardom, who is who I think is the main reason why Estevez has come in because. The amount of learning Estevez can do from year dom of how the championship, not only how the championship works, but how to be a proper right back in the championship is probably the main reason why he's come in. Yeah. Also, then, obviously, the other fullback position we could do with a bit more depth in. Mm. However, if you have Araruna comes back, year dom comes back, and Estevez is obviously still fit and playing mm. that allows Yeardom who's versatile and can also play at left back yeah we had that discussion as well we also had a discussion that we that maybe Gibson um, might have, might be able to slot, slot in there as well because it, yeah. left, it might be able to go and slot in there as well also reading about Estevez as well he can play further up the pitch play right midfield or centre midfield as well he does love a good run by the videos I've been watching so he's very yeah. very he's probably we've won the transfer we've the Reading as general have won 
the championship transfer window um, by because if you look at the Deadwood that went out, Mark Minolte's also gone back out on loan um, to Dundee, which made made me laugh. Not because he's gone back out on loan, it was because of of the bit that they put. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it because uh, it, it it chuckled me. Um, let me go and find the Dundee. Here it is. So the thing that made me laugh a lot is, so someone's put, take a look at our first snaps of our new striker in tangerine, because of tangerine colour. He goes, he's pacey, clever, fantastic in the 18-yard box, and you only have to look at the goals per come. He scores everywhere he has been. He's got one goal in 13 or 14 appearances for us. So, and he's also up for match fixing. Um, but we're not going to talk about that on the podcast because everyone is innocent until they are proven guilty. Um, and we do not want to incriminate ourselves um, in any way whatsoever. Um, if he's innocent, well, then that's good for him. Well done. Um, but yes, why is Charlie Nicholas trending? So I'm going to give you the reason why Charlie Nicholas is trending, right? And I do apologise for going quiet. Is because he's slated um, Celtic um, for their transfer dealings. Um, And Neil Lennon has apparently gone, we could have signed Messi and Ronaldo and Charlie Nicholas would still have found fault with it. Um, No, it's because you lot are a shit club, that's why. Um, Fuck Celtic. Um... But yeah, so interesting times. So thank you ever so much for everyone joining the very first transfer deadline day review. Um, for all obviously, clients. we're very limited with how many of these we can do. Yeah, but we will we will start. I will talk to Ryan about maybe doing a podcast once a week on top of what we do, of maybe doing a general roundup of all Actually, things uh, before we finish. Because obviously the domestic window is still open. It is. What do we need? Winger. I, I yeah. I think we just need one one more winger. I think I think. We'll, and, we'll, okay. And who who would you suggest? Ooh. Smith Rowe. Who I was going to say. I think the connections between us and Arsenal could really help us with that. Um, maybe Reese Nelson. Hopefully. I don't. I don't think. No, he... I don't think I either. But if Arsenal are thinking of loading him out, one that I saw the other day, apparently Roman um, Curtis. I... I'm there. I I don't know where I saw it the other day. But I'm sure I saw someone say um, Curtis Jones from Liverpool. He's not a winger. He's a centre mid. Yeah, I know. But I saw someone say we were, we were going after him. I think that would be difficult because he's actually playing for Liverpool. Yeah, but I, I have seen as well that a lot of Liverpool fans have been wishing death upon him because that's what they like to do as a club. As a fan base, again, like if any Liverpool fans are watching it, I don't mean it as a whole because I know, but you do see a, a minor. Chuba Akpom! Chuba Akpom is the one that left Arsenal and he's the, he's the, and he went to Greece and went with um, Patok. I googled it while you were talking. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's. A, a small minority, and I've seen him get death threats. So he deleted social media over it, actually. Who did? Because, um, Curtis Jones deleted his socials because of the abuse he was getting from Liverpool fans because of one of his performances. Just fucking, just ridiculous, isn't it? Um, so uh, he was at Arsenal till 2018, where he left, went to Patok. Um, for two years, um, yeah, he went to Patok, played 54 times, got 14 goals, 
Um, and then he's just moved permanently to Middlesbrough, um, where he's played two times and got two goals. Um, so he could be a bit of a worry when we play them after the international break. Uh, Jesus. Um, but yeah, so that's quite, that's quite, I'm quite happy I remember someone left Arsenal. So I've just, um, I've just Googled Curtis Jones just to see, like, see what about it. Five days ago, the Daily Mail, Liverpool will put faith in starlets Neko Williams and Curtis Jones and not sign replacements. Four days ago, Jurgen Klopp warned, warned Curtis Jones could leave Liverpool due to Thiago Alcantara, Alcantara transfer. Dear Lord. <laughs> But yeah, right. So we're, I'm gonna have a chat with Ryan off air to see when we'll be able to do this. But I have a feeling we're gonna we're gonna do a Reading review podcast. Um, we're re- reviewing the game, and we're gonna do that again with Ryan's review of the Watford game coming up this Friday for you guys. Um, where because we had Adam, we didn't have Ryan's view. Um, but we're gonna have him. We might go do one this Friday. We're gonna do a review. Um, we're gonna talk about the England fixtures coming up. Um, quickly before we go. Well, how do you think the game's going to go on Thursday between England and Wales? Okay. <laughs> so England are going to win, I think, and I think we're going to absolutely smash them because there's no Bale, there's no Aaron Ramsey, but at the same time, we have no Sancho, Chilwell, Tammy Abrams, but we got none of them because they broke coronavirus rules and they're being punished for being naughty boys. Um, but we've got Belgium and Denmark coming up. Um, two very tough, tough games. Uh, one very tough game, one eh, game. Uh, so what we would do is this Friday, we will do a review to the Belgium game and we will do a review to the Denmark game, um, talking about that. Uh, we will also do a review of the Reading game and what's going on. If there's any transfers or anything, we will have that do that as well. Uh, we will be back doing, hopefully, with Courtney maybe, um, on Monday, if not, we would just do something anyway to review the weekend's action of everything that's gone on, any transfer and rules or anything like that. We will do one then, uh, and then we will go from there. But thank you guys ever much for listening um, and watching this um, maybe weekly episode. We'll see. We will see. But we will see what goes on and what happens from here. But thank you so much for joining, and we will see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bye.